welcome to St. George's Church on this first Sunday of Christmas. Uh, we live stream our service, and the very end of that is recording everything, so if you want to stay on the live stream, avoid uh, that particular corner. She does cover the uh, live stream when you receive communion, so you will not be seen as you come forward. We'll be using Common Worship Order 1, found in, uh, in your pamphlets. Uh, there will be some additions for the Christmas season, and I will try to remember to know those. Uh, our opening hymn is number 42 in the New English Hymn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will sing Glory Be to God in Heaven, found on page 4. Glory be to God in heaven, peace to those who love you well. On the earth and all your people, seek your grace, your wonder self. Lord, we praise you for your glory, mighty Father and King. Hear our joyful. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his tail 
Our hymn is number 33, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 7.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from John, whose name, from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Yes, we're in the middle of the Christmas season. Now, in many places, the world is preparing to move on. But we spend a little time enjoying, reveling in the gift we have been given. We rejoice in the coming of the baby born in a manger. As we know God incarnate coming in a form that was helpless coming in a form that is most open to receive, in the form of so much more. Oh yes, we, we love the scenes, we love the presente which we find everywhere that depict a moment or moments, but the Gospel speaks beyond that of God's eternal purposes. God's eternal purposes through which he has changed our relationship. This day, born in a manger, born under the most humble of circumstances, came that our relationship with God the Father might be completely different. If we look back to Old Testament times and understandings, we see God as a, a distant figure. 
or God as a figure residing in this or that place that cannot be approached. But now we read that God has made it possible through the Son for us to become God's own children. Today's Gospel, of course, is the great prologue to John's Gospel. We read it at the carol service. It sets forth the truth of who Jesus is. And in the prologue, he is, of course, described as the Word. In the beginning was the Word, not later on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him. The Word that was spoken. Remember, and God said, let there be light. And let there be all of creation and through this Word and the Spirit moving on the face of the waters, all things came into being. So this Son born is not one from later in time, but was there in the beginning. And he came into the world as light. Light of all people. We're reminded in the Gospel that that light shines in the darkness that still persists in this world. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness cannot, does not, overcome. We're reminded that he was in the world and the world came into being through him from the beginning. He came to his own, and they did not receive him. But, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Now notice it's more than just a status, but it's power. Power to become God's own children, power to live in a new and wonderful relationship. Born in a new way. Not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And that word became flesh and lived among us. Full of grace. He came born in humble circumstances, growing up in humble circumstances, but beginning to exercise that ministry of which John the Baptist is spoken. He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. And remember also when John was questioned, are you the Messiah? He said, no, another is coming. And I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Next to him, I'm in the, in the lowest of all possible positions. And from that, from the fulfillment of that promise, we have received grace upon grace. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. One of the contemporary translators says, the Word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood, became one of us. And through becoming one of us, He showed us a different way. He left us when in obedience to God, He was called back from an earthly body. He left us with a wonderful example, and He came back with the Father to dwell in us. The 
critical thing is we have this new relationship. Paul talks about it in Galatians. It used to be, he says, it used to be that you had the law as a minder. It used to be that everyone was wrapped up in thinking their righteousness came from adherence to the law as a disciplinarian. But now, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. Again, the power to become God's own children. You are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. And then perhaps most critically, the final verse of today's gospel. No one has ever seen God. No one. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This child, born in the manger, growing up in humble circumstances, living a ministry of power and love, has actually shown us the face of the Father and the fullness of God's love for us. For this, we give him thanks. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed found on page six of your book. We believe in one God. The Father of the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. Remember all those known to us who are sick or shut in, 
those who are recovering giving thanks for their recovery. We remember especially Jenny, Pam, Norma. We pray for the priests at Matsayo uh, and Bethlehem for healing for him. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. The Lord graciously hear us. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. The Lord graciously hear us. Rejoice in the fellowship of St. George and of all your saints. We commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Bring us all to your heavenly country, to the joyful gathering of thousands of angels, to the assembly of your firstborn, to the spirits of the saints made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to all here. Peace and welcome. Welcome especially to these two young people who were baptized here a number of years ago when I was here. So the pictures on the wall. It's good to have them back since technically are there are members. <laughs> yes, not as Yes. Uh, we remind you as we gather our offering that St. George is a self-supporting and we rely on the gifts of those who live here and those who visit us. So please give as generously as you are able. Our hymn is number 22 in the hymn book.
page of your booklet uh, with a different introduction in preparation. Word may flesh life of the world in your incarnation, you embrace our poverty by your spirit, and may we share in your riches. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because in coming to dwell among us as man, he revealed the radiance of your glory, and brought us out of darkness, into your own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy.
Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are
body of Christ to you in the last day. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and may you with you forever. Amen. The body of Christ to you in the last day. The body of Christ. Heavenly Father, who has blessed his son and shared it, master for life of an earthly home. Help your church to live as one family, united in love and obedience, and bring us all at last to our home in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. End of page 16. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your grace and glory. Amen. <coughs> I don't have a list of notices from... Yes, you do.
but I'm leaving Mary Ann behind, so she'll be here next Sunday, but she'll be here the Sunday after, and for a few more Sundays, she's working on Italian citizenship. But it's been wonderful being with all of you, uh, and uh, I will be back, uh, God willing, in September. So, it won't, and maybe if Mary Ann misses me too much, <laughs> Keep an eye on our new report to me. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> reports have already been made, I'm saying so. <laughs> tell them tell what we did Friday night. Bingo. Bingo. I was going to have to play bingo on her. She's addicted, so she won 25 yeah. year old. No, I won 33, and then I won that straight across line, whatever yeah, they call that. So keep running bingo for <laughs> <laughs> And then Yuna is live with us. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Yuna. Uh, we're going to have, a, and we'll take some time for refreshments and then after that we need to have just a short association board meeting. So uh, before we leave, we'll gather for a few minutes. Any other announcements? Sylvia told me the second hand was unknown, but you all did very well. <laughs> <laughs> it fit in the uh, well with the gospel, which is why I chose it. So. But I think we all won this hymn, uh, which I have retrieved my hymn for, uh, number 29. Of course, it's not the American tune.
eternal Son, from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. This concludes our service.